everybody. My name is Pauli Suraho and I'm working for Rovi Animation Espo and I work there as a pipeline and tools developer. Uh, two years ago we started to develop a TV series called Angry Birds Tunes. It is based on our fairly popular brand Angry Birds. It's a 52 episodes, two and a half minute mini series that tells the backstory of the why the birds are angry and why the pigs wants to steal their eggs. Uh, recently, our we, we, we broadcast the Angry Birds tunes in our Tunes TV channel, and we have uh, many partners all over the world that we produce. Uh, we, we broadcast with. Recently, our Tunes TV channel bypassed two, uh, sorry, three billion views. So I'm going to show you a short clip that is going to show you and uh, give you an idea what the uh, series is about so I can have a context in my speech. There we go, sorry for that. When we started, uh, we noticed quite soon that we want to produce a very high quality animation. And one of the requirements was that almost every shot in the series should have a unique background. When you have 52 episodes and two and a half minutes, you we pretty quickly calculated that it's a lot of backgrounds. And my work as a pipeline and tools developer is try to identify those places where we can optimize the workflow reduce some repetitive uh, tasks and uh, make compositors' life easier. In my words, I try to replace people with buttons and scripts. So in this talk, I'm going to focus on how we create, uh, how we export the backgrounds from our painting department, which use Photoshop for all the backgrounds, and how we export those to After Effects, where we do all of our compositing. And I'm not a really fan of PowerPoint presentations. That's why there's a black screen, no. I'm going to show you in real time, live demo, how I will create final quality animation where a background with camera animation and the background has a parallax effect. And this is an actual shot, so let me show you the shot. So here's a clip. <laughs> <laughs> from the one of the animatic of course every single episode that we do we produce an animatic then so that it will give a lot of people uh, idea what the actual animation is going to be so I'm going to produce oh. one of the backgrounds here or one of the shots here the shot 22 that has this nice panning shot and it shows the what we call peaks peaks castle in the background and then it drops down to the cave and Let's give it, it uh, somehow a realistic uh, deadline. Let's say 15 minutes. So oh. in 15 minutes, I'm going to produce that shot. So let's, up, uh, let's fire up Photoshop and After Effects. In both of the applications, we have created uh, like a panel of buttons that I, as a tools developer, can add scripts that the artist can press. And uh, they can... Uh, uh, I can then 
use the system so that when I deploy it once, it goes all over the studio, so I don't have to go running around and uh, adding people's desktops, anything. I just, uh, it's, a, it's a distribution system for the tools. And we have the similar kind of setup for After Effects. And I, I will be using these a lot, so because they are the essential core of our you know, pipeline optimizations. Here's a background that we get from a background department. It's a line art at first, so that you can uh, have the layout set up, where you want the camera to be, where you want to have the characters, where you want the, the light direction to be. So the director can review this, and then they can decide, do they need to do something changes? Because if you do that with a fully finished background, it's going to do a lot of work uh, if you have to repaint and all other ones. So it's a little time saver here. The Photoshop file is already structured into groups that we can use in After Effects to create the parallax effect. In the tool pool, I have an export background to IAE button, and I can just select the folder where I want to up, uh, publish this. I don't care for now for the name. And it starts uh, taking every single element there. It starts to trim them, crop them, and put them in the, as a, save them as a PNG files so that we can later on build this exactly the same background in After Effects. While it's doing that, let's go to After Effects, and let's create a shot file that we can work on. Every single project, we have defined a template project file, which has all the uh, camera information, like resolution, and frame rate, color space, these kind of things, a uh, little folder structure to begin with. And we import an animatic here, and you can see I have already marked where my shot is going to be. Normally, I would get this information with another script from our shot management system, but I don't have access to the uh, internet here, so I'd rather do it manually. We can, of course, use manually if we add a shot manually later. It's basically just marking the where the uh, shot is starting and how long it's going to take. In the tool pool, I have a button that will save those base scene setups that I can then start working on. So let's open up the newly created uh, shot file, and it's, it's the correct length. I don't have to worry about anything. I can just start building there. Meanwhile, in Photoshop, the actual exporting process is done, so let's just import that into our After Effects. I click this button and select the background that I want to import. I don't, uh, if you see that the, 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 here are all the PNG images that after, uh, sorry, the Photoshop export script has created. So I just import it here, and that's not really with this full resolution. Our, all of our backgrounds are quite huge, so we also automatically generate proxy files for the, for the background so that After Effects uh, works a little faster. And if you look at the main composition, here are all the elements built inside After Effects the same way as they are in the uh, Photoshop. So we have the exactly same background here. Oh, this is, you know, very basic stuff. Why would anybody care about this? Well, the great thing about this is that I can now add this to a scene master, and let's press another button which will time the composition. It's with, uh, the, the retiming composition is such that it's is going to go through all of the pre-comps and it's going to make sure that they are the same length as the main one. So it's, it's a really useful feature. And then let's change the actual resolution of the background comp file. And we can, with After Effects camera tool, I can start seeing that I have a little bit of parallax here. So I can start positioning the camera right away where I specified, or where the layout department has specified in the, in the Photoshop. And if I go to the level one, I can see that all the field guides, that the, we call them field guides, where the camera information is, they are already imported into After Effects as a guide layer so they don't get rendered. So now that I see them, I can position, I can position the camera where the actual shot requires it to be. I have uh, two cameras in the, in the 
composites on animation camera and projection camera. So the animation camera is the one that I want to modify, and the projection camera is the one that makes sure that the background is uh, looking exactly the same as in Photoshop. So let's go and add some keyframes. And for the end of this shot, the camera should be down here. Where is the field guy? There we go. And I have created the basic camera movement for the shot. So I'm kind of halfway done here. Back in background department, background department has started to color the background and they have, they have finished the coloring. So it's, it's exactly the same background but it's just color information. So if I go here, you can see that all the elements are, are again in the same in structure as in the line art. And I can go and export this background with the same script that I did the line art. I don't care about the name. When we, we have <laughs> huge backgrounds, they might be like 10K backgrounds. And this process might take quite long. So what our artists started to have is spontaneous coffee breaks because their Photoshop was rendering. So we moved this exporting process to the render farm so that the artists don't have to worry about this part. They just press the button and it's uh, being sent to the render farm. We started this pipeline design with CS6, so we didn't have any kind of uh, dynamic linking, but you might be wondering, why go through all this trouble? Why don't just use uh, uh, default importer script, uh, importer, uh, BSD importer in After Effects? Well, there's a couple of reasons. One, it didn't support uh, updating and uh, like adding new layers or update the names of the layers. And the other thing was that we, we don't now have to have a clean background BSD file. We can use directly the straight background file that we get from the background artist. All the brush strokes and all the adjustment layers are there. We just export those groups as uh, PNGs and we can work with that in After Effects. Back in After Effects, now the uh, exporting is done. I can just use the same importing script that I used before and select the newly exported colored background. Actually, let's uh, fit that. So that you can see a little bit what's going on. So this is now the colored version, yes. So let's open up and it's going to replace all the you know, line art with the uh, colored background image. Well, I basically have already the structure. I have the nice camera animation with the colored background, but now I'm almost finishing the deadline, but the director requires some changes to the setup. Maybe the parallax is a little too shallow or a little too much. Maybe you want to adjust that. And if you would have manually placed all of those uh, layers in the 3D depth, you're in a bit of uh, trouble. So for that, we have uh, created another nice tool that we call rubber band background. So let me show you how the background composition works in uh, 3D VF. So those who know about what par parallax backgrounds is, it's basically just uh, uh, layers in depth so that when the camera moves, we get an illusion of depth. But if I now want to change it, I don't want to manually go there and change all the scales and all the positions, the layers. I can just use, uh, for example, uh, I have here a near plane and far plane, which controls, controls the amount of parallax that I'm going to get. So think it as a, like a rubber band, that you have the layers in the rubber band. If you contract and stretch the all the elements in, inside the back, uh, rubber band is going to uh, be squeezed and stretched. This has a nice effect that the background layers are always in order. You cannot switch the order of the background layers. And this is really great when you, the layout department has defined that the characters need to be in front of the tree, so the composition artist might not accidentally set up it behind the tree. But we can go a little further. Let's imagine that rubber band and keep the, keep the ends still and take a pin 
inside the rubber band and you can move the middle of it. So you can contract and subtract portions of the rubber band. So we have here another button with, with add such pin into the background file. And by moving it, I can control like I would control the rubber band. If I make another pin and break the rubber band, I can use, now I have two rubber bands that I can control very easily the parallax. So just duplicating that layer, I can move that part forward and that part uh, like backward. So it gives a very nice set of tools that you can sit down with director and discuss how much parallax you want to get and where the camera animation is going to be. So here, are, here we have our finished animation, under 50 minutes. Of course, now it would go to the render farm. Our artist would just click the render button. And we do this a lot. We do not want that artists uh, type names or they have to worry about the render settings. Just press a button and scripts will worry about those things. We want that the artists focus on what they do best. We want that the compositors, they do compositing, compositing, not, not typing names. So I'm going to show you now the final thing that actually ended up, let me open that in QuickTime Player, and let's put it in a loop mode. And this is the actual background that was rendered, and you can see from the upper corner that the version number is one. If you have worked in directors, you know that they require a lot of changes. But before, we, 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 we rendered only one version of this part of the animation, and the director approved it. So it's a huge time saver for us. Now, I have to say a disclaimer for the Angry Birds season two producers. It's not always this easy. Well, the, of course, you have uh, special effects. You have uh, characters. You have a uh, masked scenes of lots of uh, lots of pigs. But we do export every single background with the same process because it gives us a framework where we can build upon other tools. And unfortunately, I don't have time to show all of those tools now. But instead, I'm going to show you something, uh, some another animation that is not tools related, but something that is upcoming from Rovio. So if you're wondering what Rovio is going to do next, here's something, some glimpse of that. And then we can go to questions if you have any, OK? Anybody born in the 80s will probably appreciate that video. <laughs> Thank you.